Are you ready for the word this morning? Yes. Me too. Me too. You know, uh, I don't know if anybody here is like me. I think pretty much everybody is about like me in this regard. Have you ever been to the fridge to check what's in there and you don't find what you want? So you walk away, but then just a couple minutes later, you go back and you open the fridge. Anybody ever been there just to try to find something in the fridge that's going to maybe satisfy that belly, right? Or a snack. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, you know, if you have kids, you're just like, how many times are you going to open that fridge, right? Uh, it's the same way. Anybody ever done that to their pantry? A place, you know, maybe they open the pantry door and, and you might see the chips and the chips aren't doing it for you. There's some cereal, but it's just not it. And so then you're like, ah, oh, there's nothing to eat. But it's just, it, 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 sometimes it's like there's a can of beans and, there are, and there's all kinds of cans of tomatoes and corn and all kinds of stuff. There's flour, there's baking soda. There's so much stuff there, but it's just like, Uh, And you know what? There's some good cooking right there, but it takes work, so you don't know where to start. And so one of the things that uh, it seems to be uh, uh, the same, I guess, analogy, if you will, uh, parable, uh, is when you open the Word of God. Sometimes you open the Word of God and you just open it and you're like, okay, I don't know where to start. Anybody ever been there? Isn't it uh, a blessing sometimes, though, when you come home and, uh, and you smell something on the stove that's cooked? You don't have to go to the pantry. And you, and I was just talking to Mr. Victor about this yesterday on an outreach. Uh, there's something about when you come, his wife brought him a, lo- a sandwich, like, in the middle of the day in case you get hungry. I was like, well, that's pretty good right there. And, and he's like, we're like, isn't it so great when you come home and you smell the dinner on the stove, right? Uh, there's something about that. It's just you're not looking in the, the pantry. You're not looking in the, the fridge because it's ready. And one of the things in our house is um, as we've gotten young men that are, are grown and they're going to work, and they don't want to buy lunch every day. What they really love is when there's some really good leftovers. Um, and, and so they'll be like, are you taking that tomorrow? Oh, I'm taking that for my lunch. They, they, I got dibs on my high school, one of my high schools. St- I'm taking that for lunch tomorrow. I'm taking that for lunch. Just leave that alone, right? And you know what? This is, this is like as we come into church, sometimes you, you, maybe you don't know where to open to. And um, if you'll take some notes, like what the messages came forth in offering, that was some good cooking and there's some leftovers that, 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 that are better the next day. And um, you might not know where to just turn. You'll just kind of do like the pantry, plop and flop and be like, okay. And I know we have our Bible reading plan, but there's something about where you can take note or in a sense fill your plate with something that somebody else cooked. And it's like, and, and, and it's the house, it's mom's cooking. How many of you know like mama's cooking or, you know, like when dad cooks steaks, you're like, I'll take that, to, I'll take that tomorrow, you know. And you take that, and you can put that before you. This is why note-taking is so important. So many times I see young people, or, or even Christ, just Christians have been saved a long time. They don't know where to start studying God's Word. They don't know what, what to do with their morning, and so they don't do anything. But I'll tell you, that cooking, if you'll just take the leftover, if you'll just take the notes, and you open that back up to those verses that we didn't turn to, and you just decide to have a little snack of that, You'll find that you're not looking and filling up with other stuff, and you won't be spinning your wheels or having to pull off uh, and spend all that money on uh, to get some gas station food. The, on, right. So anyway, right. so uh, there's just a little help if you've ever maybe struggled uh, to figure out where to start on Sunday or Monday morning, Tuesday morning. Uh, you have a little bit of time. Well, this is what the notebook's really good for, because you can have some containers uh, right there. This is a little container. Uh, and perfect, perfect portion size. All right, we're going to get into the word this morning. Um, so last week, uh, back to faith school, we I actually had a substitute teacher. Oh. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And so Landon uh, was our substitute teacher. How many of you enjoyed uh, Landon last week? Yeah, great substitute. <laughs> Typical substitute, you know, showing a, a movie. Um, <laughs> I was like, what? I gave you notes. He's showing a movie. Uh, but no, he, no, it was an awesome, awesome time, um, and he had shared that whatever before, and I just thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, yeah, that's great. You're showing a movie. Yeah. Um, and so, but it was such a great message, and I went back and listened to it. I caught half of it, the latter portion uh, on our drive, but um, I have since listened to it. Really, really important uh, how you and I get ready, knowing who we are, the righteousness of God in Christ, right? 
And so um, I want to play a video. I guess I got permission from the substitute um, to play that same video again. And I just want to stop it to this piece. Uh, and this morning is really um, just, it, it's, there's, there's some review, but it, maybe it'll be heard, it'll, and maybe some new, but really it's, uh, it's going to be heard in a different way. Um, and, and so I want, I want not review so much from the substitute, but maybe some things that we know, we know, right? Um, we haven't taught it yet in this series, but we know. And so I would call it review because uh, we're going to talk about, about faith. If you'll hit that video this morning, we're going to stop it at a certain point. Uh, we won't play the whole thing because I want to make uh, draw your attention to something about a past that is actually not just a past, it's actually forever. Um, and so go ahead and hit play. Your father is waiting. Do you see him? I don't see anything. Call a Selama. Look closer. You see? He lives in you. Simba. Take your place in the circle of life. I can't. You must remember who you are, the one true king. I'm sorry. I don't know how to be like you. As king, I was most proud of one thing, having you as my son. That was a long time ago. No, Simba. That is forever. That was a long time ago. No, that is forever. And so many times we take the story of Christ and we take that as a long time ago uh, and not as a present thing. Uh, faith is a present word. And this whole, this whole, this whole series um, about back to uh, faith school uh, stems from this uh, verse where Jesus asked in, in Luke 18, uh, 8, he says, will, I, will the Son of Man, when he returns, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? He's looking for it in present tense. He's not looking like, well, was there faith? He says, will he find faith? And, and, and so I, here's, here, here's what, we have an opportunity to answer that question. And you could say, in this house or in my house, you will find faith. You're going to find faith in the Schlegel home. You're going to find faith in Beyond Church. You're going to find faith in, in this place. Why? Because we're going to hold on. We're going to stick to the present word the, and the word of Christ, the message of the gospel, his story, history. You know, you could kind of break that apart. In my notes, I broke that apart. His story, history, it, it changed my story now. His story changes my story. History changes my story. It's present now because, because of what he did. It, it's not yesterday. It's forever. It's not just forever in the future. It's present now. And, and I, have to, I have to establish that, that what he did is present today. And so I want to I want to uh, just take a, just a moment and, and, and reiterate just yesterday or not, last week's message uh, in in reg regard to um, what Jesus did, his story, his story. And I, I want to just just for uh, based on where we're at this morning, I want to hit on this this way. Let's start at Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one. It says, "Now faith is when is faith? It's now. Uh, it's the assurance of things hoped for." And is the evidence of those things not seen. So uh, simply put this, that faith, faith speaks of what you have that you cannot see. It's a substance. It, this is to walk in faith is, is not, well, I see it. No, faith, it, its very definition is having something you can't see. So this is important. You can have something that you can't see right now. And so one of the things that you and I got to establish and really hold to right now, and that's what Landon uh, spoke all on last week, was he spoke on our identity. 
getting ready, you know, he spoke on, you know, one of the most important things, if we're going back to faith school, is how you get ready in the morning. And they, he talked about confession, like what, and, and declaring who you are in, in agreement with what the Word of God says. But one of the things that he really highlighted on this last week was uh, looking in the mirror of the Word, what would be our righteousness that comes through Christ. It comes through Christ and Him alone. And I he, he, he hit on this for a moment, but I want to go back to this. Um, and that is what happened when, uh, when Christ gave his life for ours, when he was our substitute. When he was our substitute. Aren't you thankful that um, God is just? And when a, a paper gets, you know, just like in school, if you turn in work, you get graded by that work. Well, Jesus turned in some work. He turned in our paper. And so guess what? Our grade is, that's, if, you're, if you've come under Christ, it's like a group assignment. Your name's on that assignment. You can go to your teacher and you can say, uh, why does it say F there? I have an A. As a matter of fact, A plus extra credit. And she's like, no. And you're like, no, I'm a part of that. That's how, I, my name's on that assignment. And, and the, the teacher's going to have to change that grade. But you know what? Sometimes we're just walking around with Fs in life. And, and it's just simply because we don't understand that we're, we are a part of that group. We're a part of that assignment in the present. And so what happened in the Old Testament was, was this. that there, And I, I'm going to say something that maybe be a little bit of a headbend to you this morning. And I, I, I just want you to humor it for a moment uh, rather than try to pick holes in it. But God doesn't forgive sin. He did forgive sin. But he doesn't forgive sin because now um, he, he washed it away to where he says, what sin? So there was a time, this is in the Old Testament, where there was, had to be a blood sacrifice. And that blood sacrifice, so there's, we're going to talk about just, just for a moment, just three things. Atonement, forgiveness, and remission. The removal of. That's the last one. This is where we've, this is New Testament, the removal of, okay? Uh, the removal of. This is like where if you go to 1 John 1 9, he says, even where when you confess your sin, right, uh, he's faithful to, uh, and just to wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then you would say, how can he forgive what you don't have? Because it's not, it's not covered anymore, it's, it's removed. It, it, this is the work of Christ. The grade on your paper is the grade of Christ. His story changed my story. This is where I'm at. And i got to establish, uh, establish that as that's mine today. This is how I approach uh, the, the throne of God. Uh, according to Hebrews, when you and I approach the throne of grace, or the throne of God to uh, uh, receive mercy and grace to help in time of need, what we're really doing when we approach his throne, we're approaching, uh, I want you to see it like approaching the bench, or approaching the judge, the king. And you get to go, come in and declare, it's unjust for this to be because of I'm not only justified, but I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when you, all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. And why is that? Because you, you, you maybe some people are like, I don't want to hear it that way. You are deserving because of Christ. That's right. That's right. That, that grade is your grade because you're on that, uh, you, you're in him. You're a part of him. So that grade, so when, when, the, when in life you get the F, you can approach and you can fight the fight of faith. The enemy would love uh, to bring destruction, steal, kill, and destroy from you because of what you don't know. But when you and I understand because of what Christ has done, I am made righteous. I can approach and, and justly. Ju I, I, God is a just God. Everything, you, he's just. So if you're justified, that, that, is, that is unjust for that to be operating in your life. It's unjust for that to be on your body. It's unjust to be robbed from. It's unjust. It's unjust. And you and I have to establish that that's the truth and hold to it and, and, and not be moved because of what you see or time. Well, that's probably one of the greatest things that's going to that's gonna be a transition and aid in our faith when we step across this dispensation, what we call time. We won't recognize this. We'll just, it's just the, this is the way it is. And we're not, we're like looking, well, how long has it been? It's just, this is the decree. It's law. It, we're not aware of length uh, of how long it took to happen. And so we, we just, oh, it's settled. This is the way it is. 
Right now, here on this earth, one of the greatest enemies uh, to faith is time. Where you and I say something, agree something, we hear something, and faith comes, not here. You don't understand it here, but it was received here of the heart. And you're like, yeah, that is right. That is, I mean, that, that yeah, just, that's, not, that's unjust for that because I am the righteous. You get that, but you, you can't fully grasp. But then you start looking time. You start looking at, well, it's been this long. And what happens is, is we move from to what our belief is to what we see. But the Bible tells us we're to walk by faith. Not by sight. You remember we talked about this a few weeks ago about how we got to put our name on it. We got to put, we got to make it ours. And one of the ways that we keep it ours is is, is that we fix our eyes on that which is uh, not seen. Yeah. But in that scripture uh, or in that passage when he says we walk by faith, not by sight, that whole passage is talking about the the veil of eternity. Or in other words, that there's something tomorrow, in the hope of heaven ultimately. All right. So here we are. So let's just again atonement, forgiveness, and remission. Uh, and so we're in the place of remission, where, where you're washed clean, washed away. You, though my sins were like scarlet, now they're white as snow, it tells us in Isaiah. And that, uh, that's a precious thing. When we receive communion, when we receive the, the, the body that was, was beaten for us, and by his stripes, we were not going to be, but we are healed. That, and when I received the blood, uh, the, 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 the juice or the wine, that, and represented it as his blood, that was a new agreement. He said, this is a new agreement I'm making with, with you. That's a powerful thing, that God's making an agreement with you. So i got to come into agreement with him and say, his story changed my story. His story, it, it, that, it's history. It's my history. Yeah. Right? And so... Um, Again, in Landon, he spoke on this, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Uh, God made him who had no sin uh, to be for us. And so we, we, we say that all the time. If, you were to, if I was to ask you, how many of you believe that God, uh, Jesus, uh, came and was made sin for me? Anybody here believe that Jesus was made sin for me? Most hands would go, yeah, I believe that Jesus, yeah, as Christians, right? And this is the message I'm talking, I'm talking to believers here. You know, sometimes um, as a pastor, it can be difficult to preach a message to the church, uh, those who are saved and born again, um, and yet, uh, yet some, somehow have this uh, the thought that, oh, you got to make sure you include the unbeliever here. Um, there's things that unless you come under Christ, they're not going to make sense to you yet. Right. It's like being a part of the family. Like you got to got to sit at the table to hear the <laughs> a little bit of what's going on, so you get what's. A little history. So if we're ever going to grow and we're going to advance, we're going to have to be able to talk to family. And then family, which we're going to have to do our job, which is what you even heard in this testimony, and that is the works of ministry, which is to carry the message that everyone here has been given this ministry of reconciliation, which is like this. He's asking you to beg people to come back to God. This is every one of our, our jobs, right? But so this message I'm talking to you about uh, this morning is that we would, so many people would believe, as a Christian, you would believe that Jesus was made sin for you. But in the same verse, how many of you believe that you were made righteous by Jesus? We don't think of that. We say, oh, he was made sin for us. Yeah, but you were made righteous by him. As it goes on to say, the same verse, so he was made sin for us so that in him we might now become. So that he, we might become his righteousness, right? The righteousness of God. And so that, that's, that's how God is. He, uh, he, he, made, he made a substitute uh, and, and it's Romans chapter 3, 22. And this righteousness from God, how does it come? It says right here. This righteousness from God. So it's not a, word, a righteousness that you earned, right. it's a gift. Yes. Your mom taught you this, hey, when, they, when you give her the gift, what do you say? Thank you. Yeah, so you, you know, sometimes they just get a little tap on the butt. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. How many of you know if you've received the gift, you say thank you? Yes. I think this is where we're at uh, so many times. Well, there's not enough thank yous going on because there's not enough get reality of the gifts. That Christ has given to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says the, this righteousness is given. It's a gift through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. What, what's, the, what's the key? Believe. Uh, to come under that word. You can come under his reign, his rule, his decree. He reigns, he reigns. How does he reign? With his word. 
And so you and I come under that word. And what happens is, is we get his righteousness. We can receive that. So, you know, um, he did the work, and you can be graded on his work. Isn't that cool? I mean, I, I just it's amazing. God is so good. So um, uh, this morning we're going to talk about this. A little review for when things aren't adding up. A little review for when things aren't adding up. This is called faith school. Um, you ever had a, a, a we're going to do faith math. How's that? Faith math. Uh, when things aren't adding up. So I got a whiteboard here this morning, and uh, this is going to be the uh, kind of a start of something that I'm going to do this morning. And oh, praise the Lord. Oh, there was a phone and a, uh, a tripod back there caught in there. I didn't see that. All right. Landon, you get that tripod. Uh, be a great substitute. <laughs> oh, this is tough. All right. I had him put it over on the side, and I said, oh, don't worry. I'll handle the board. And, uh, well, there you go. Um, all right. So here we are. We're going to do a little faith math this morning. And um, all right. How many of you went to school for math? Right? You learned this. You, this might have been way back in the day. But we're going to do a pretty basic uh, math problem. Um, and, and this is, it's important for us to keep uh, uh, just these kind of, this, this before us, right? Simple thing. If you have a balance of checkbook uh, uh, or, you know, oh, look at that. That's, look, that's nice. Okay. There, there you go. Oh, there it is. How many of you can see this? Yeah, okay, we can see it. All right, we're good. All right, so we're going to do a a math problem this morning. Um, And I wonder, this seems like it's backwards. Is this backwards, like it's going to be mirrored image? Let's see here. Wow. Well, what are you laughing at me for? I was watching up there. I feel backwards. All right, so we're going to just... What? Okay, I don't know what's so funny. It feels really weird. Like, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> no, it's got a little hook right there. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, we can just fix our eyes up there. Uh, <laughs> let's let's just do this. So we're gonna do a math problem. Uh, we're gonna do addition. Uh, we're gonna add uh, these two numbers up. Okay. All right. You guys ready? Okay, so we got, uh, n- help me out, 9 plus uh, 5 is 14, okay, and 2 uh, plus 1 is 3, okay, 314, it's, what, that's not right? I keep getting it wrong, the teacher keeps giving me the wrong, like, I, I was like, I, can, is, is 9, is 9 plus 5, is that not 14? Yes. Did I not write 14? Yes. Okay, so my, 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 my teacher is clearly, you know, because I'm like, you taught me 9 plus 5 is 14, put 14, 2 plus 1, this is so easy, guys, hello, 3, so it's 314, is that right? No? Okay, somebody help me out, okay, so this is wrong. Because I'm wondering why they, I keep getting it wrong on my, my assignment. Like, I, I, I'm trying so hard to get this right. Anybody ever try so hard to get faith right? Anybody ever just been in a battle of faith? And it just seems like you're going over the same flipping numbers again and again and again. You're on the same test again and again. I'm tired of taking this test. But you know what? You've got to pass the test if you're going to move on. And you wonder why you keep getting the same test. So help me out here. So 9 plus 5 is 14. Is that right? Okay. And 2 plus 1 is 3. Y'all, help me out here. I'm trying to figure this out. So 5, 9 plus 5 is what? 14. What do I do? The 1. The one's over here. Well, help me out. Somebody help me out. So I, need a, I need a faith friend. Any faith friends up here? So, some faith friend, come up here and show me how. Landon, come show me how to do this. 
because he's a math guy. He, he's a, this is our, the numbers guy at church. He takes care of the counting the tithes and offerings and stuff, so we'll see if he can get this right. So nine plus five, help me out. Carry, nine. carry your one. What? Carry the one. Oh, carry the one. Yeah. Oh. So carry the one. So nine. So oh, you mean I put the one up here? That's right. Oh. So is this, so is this right? Oh, I get to pass the test? A plus. Hey, good, right, good job. I'm thankful for a faith friend. Got to carry the one. You know, here's the thing what happens oftentimes in our, our faith. Um, uh, there we go. All right, we're going to do this. <laughs> y'all get to, to, the rest of the service, you're going to get to watch what I see. So y'all better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Um, but anyway. So, so many times in life, we're, we're, doing, we're doing faith math. We're, doing, we're trying to walk by faith and not by sight. But what happens is we keep on getting the wrong answer, and we're really trying hard. We're genuinely trying to get it right. Genuinely, we got the things, and it's 14. It was 14. Everybody said it was 14, and it was three. It was, it was three. But we weren't carrying the one. Well, you know, we, we got to we work on carrying the one into, into our tomorrow. we got to work on carrying the one into our equation. And so many times we're not carrying him into our equation. We're, 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 we're messed up in here. I want you to see this uh, about how our, our story is not with him in it. Our story is not, we didn't carry him into tomorrow. And I'll tell you how, this is a super simple uh, explanation of how you know you're carrying him, the one. You're carrying him. This is super simple. We're, we're going to get to it here in, in a moment. But so many times, uh, his story, uh, if it changed my story, his story, what we established, Landon spoke on last week, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's history, but it's his story, and his story has changed my story. And so it, now I carry him into my equation. I carry him into my tomorrow. I carry him into every moment. And so what that looks like is this. Um, it was... It was 14, but, but I had to carry the one. So there's a but God. There's a but God that needs to be in our equation. And so we tell stories so many times. Um, we've even told apologies like this. I'm sorry, but. And so how many of you know that but kind of changes what you just said? Right? The but changes it. So our story needs to be have some but gods in it. But God. And we're telling stories uh, matter of fact, we're not even just telling stories. We're telling ghost stories. We're telling stories that are haunt of, of our past and they're haunting our future. We're talking about what has happened and, and, where, and what they did to us and what they didn't do and how and they died of this and how and we're telling ghost stories. Yeah. We're, we get, we got, some of us, your, your house is in a sense haunted because of your words. We're telling what you're. Why are you? What are you so scared about? You're, you, it may not be skeletons, and it may not be woo, but it sure got you shook. It's it's robbed you of sleep because you're telling a story with no but God. You're telling uh, ghost stories, not Holy Ghost stories. You're telling a Holy Ghost story is a help. A Holy Ghost story includes the helper. It's the, the but God moments. It's the but God in the story. It changes everything. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, 4 through 9. So tell me your story. Tell me the story that you've told your friends 14 times, and you're still going around the same mountain, and it's 314, and it's actually the answer is 44, but you can't get over the 314. You can't figure a way. It's 314. You can't figure it out, but you've told your friend the story. You told the friend the story. You told the friend the story. You told the friend the story, but what you've been leaving out is the, his story that was to change your story. And then you could move on from where you're at. And guess what you'd have? You'd have a victory. You get a W in the column. You'd, you'd win. And that win would, would, would see, you would see that, wait, God is faithful. It, it was maybe I just wasn't working something right. Maybe I said I had God's word, but the reality is my story, and what, the way I tell my story, you'll see that I don't have his word. I have a different word. And so we're going back this morning. This is the review of pay attention to your heart. This is the review of a few weeks ago, pay attention to your heart. 
There's stories that we've been telling that don't have the but God on the end. They don't have it at the beginning. They just have this story, but I'm believing God will, da 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 No, no, he did. Yeah. His story is not just history, it changes my story. It has to, it, faith is a present word. Yeah. I, it's today. Today, tell me about God. Tell me what but, the, but God. So now Ephesians chapter 2, 4 through 9, it says this, but God. So it starts up. But God, who is rich in mercy. You know what that is? When you don't get what you deserve. Thank God. We, we so many times our story is about what we deserve and why we should get this. Thank God for mercy that we don't get what we deserve. Because, but because of his great love with which he loved us, um, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together in Christ. By grace have you been saved and raised up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. So he took us, he picked us up, and he washed us off. He took us out of an impossible situation where we couldn't find our way out. And, but God, he picked us up. And he brushed us off. He cleaned us off. He washed us off. He removed all sin, remission. Not, not just atonement, not forgiveness, remission. Completely clean, gone. And he raised us up and he let us sit together in Christ for, in heavenly places. Far above. This is like way up. This is, if you go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Far above. Above everything you're facing. Above every name. You're seated in him. So this is a story that, 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 that his story changed your story and where you're seated, we need to start talking from where we're seated. So he goes on and says this, that in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. Have been. Not going to be. Have been. Any, any, anybody been saved? So, so the, if, if you're saved and you raise your hand, that means you are saved. Yeah. You, you've been saved, Good. that means you are. Yeah. So here's the, we're going to have to talk in the present. So faith talks in the present. Yeah. Faith, faith, faith is a present word. You know, when you believe, you don't believe in the future, that's called hope. Believe, when, you, when you pray, you believe. Well, you believe that you're healed that when you pray. Not when you see, you believe then. Faith is a present word. You have been saved. Not you're going to be saved. This is like 1 Peter 2.24. By his stripes you were, it doesn't say you're going to be. It says you are. Now this is a, is this a mind bender? Yeah, but I didn't ask you to get your brain engaged. I asked you to engage your heart and pay attention to your heart. And the Bible says out of your heart you're to speak. Thank God he put it that way to where we don't just, I love what, Brother Marty said before, he says, you don't laugh from your head. <laughs> you laugh from inside. The same way you don't believe from your head, you believe from your heart. Again, it, it, we believe here. I don't smell with my eyes. I see with my eyes. I don't believe with my head. I believe with my heart. Okay? So, thank the Lord he can interrupt this. Can I, can I tell you that even like, uh, this is what's so, so special and precious. When you, um, to me, when I see uh, young people or special needs people um, where, where the body or the mind may not be what we see as called totally developed. Their spirit. God, there's, there, there's no, it's, there's life there. I'll tell you, they teach me more than, like, I, I, somebody could articulate something to me. They told me a story and just, by their spirit. Did I understand it here? Because sometimes they, they, they're saying stuff to me that I don't understand here. But, but here, I'm like, oh, like it touched me deep. You know what I'm talking about? It's, those are, spe those are uh, just the reiteration of how even how God designed to deal with us. Just to, to teach, teach us that we in, we're to engage here. This is how we meet with the Lord. This is how we're to meet with one another. Actually. This is how um, we're to meet with one another. This is how we're to treat one another from the heart. We're to, we're to, we're to love people from the heart. We're to, we're to talk about coaches from the heart. Well, yeah, I'm talking about that because of football season, sports season, basketball season is coming upon us. If you have any, if you 
you can be frustrated in the stands about this or that. Here's the thing. The players are trying to win. The coaches are trying to win. You watch the hog yesterday. The coaches were trying to win and the players were trying to win. There ain't nobody trying to sabotage each other. They're on the same team. And yet you're a fan. Stupid coach. Stupid player. Stupid. We got to learn to, to, to check here before we release here. And this goes with all, all events. In the Schlegel house. In the Beyond house. In the Howard house. What, what it's going to be, it's going to be words spoken from here. Okay. Not, and you'll find words spoken from here. What they'll do is they'll lift up. They won't cut down. Yeah. You know what they'll do? They'll believe. Oh, wait, because you can't believe here. You know what they do? Love believes. What does it believe? The best. Oh, yeah. uh, well, you know, uh, uh, you believe the best. Man, how many times have we made a wrong call? How many times have we dropped the ball? How many times have, thank God for just believe the best people. Thank God we have a believe the best God. How even when we're faithless, he remains faithful. Well, let's be a believe the best people. If I'm going to be a believe the best people then, or a person, then I, I, I'm going to have to engage this a whole lot more than just this. This right here is a little snaky. Even if you're a believer. How many of you have ever partnered with a snake? Hmm? Anybody ever let this speak a little snakies? A little devil talk, a little two fork tongue talk. I'm not just talking about cutting down a church. I'm talking about anything. Thank the Lord. I don't know how we got on that. Um, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. What does it say? What's what is it? Oh, it's not up there. Um, you have been saved. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. And that not of yourself. It is. What do you say? Right there. That's what you say. How do you know if you carried the one? Well, if you have the gift. Did you carry him into your tomorrow? Did you carry the promises into tomorrow? He carried them. All of his promises, the Bible tells us, are yes and amen. He carried him into, into your tomorrow. His, his, his story changed my story into the future. He said, we just read this earlier, in ages to come. Yeah. Like his ch ch changed it yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forever. Yeah. Glory to God. And so he said, by grace you've been saved through faith. That not of yourselves. You didn't earn it. I didn't earn it. We didn't earn it. It's a gift. So what do I say? Thank you. If I got the gift, if, I, if I'm carrying, this is the faith. This is the faith equation. You know what? So many times we're forgetting. Thank you. Carry the one. Carry the one. The one that went. Thank you, Lord. The one that made the price. The one that gave the gift. The one. Carry the one. The one. Who's the one? The King of kings. The Lord of lords. Almighty God creator. Who created. There was darkness and he created light. This is what we got to carry into our equation. How do you know if you're carrying him? There's a but God. But here's what it says. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This is the story, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 57. It sounds a lot like thanks. It sounds a lot like thanks. But thanks be to God who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your story will be one uh, with a big L if you didn't carry the one. Are you losing? Is your hope of one of victory? Is your story of your tomorrow one of victory or is it one of defeat? Tell me about your story, because if there's no but God, if there's no thank you, it's called a big loss. You got a loss in the column. You got a loss in the column. You got a loss in the column. You know, you kind of put three losses together. Um, all of a sudden, you have a little momentum, and then you just be, kind of become an identity of becoming a loser. You just in life, I just it just doesn't work. I just it's just we're gonna have a bad. If you get three losses at the beginning of the season, what do you say? We're gonna have a Bad. You got a bad season? Anybody in a bad season? Because you got a, a loss? Well, I'm, I'm just get you right out of a loss. And carry the one. Oh, thank you, Lord. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, you don't have a gift if there's no thank you. 
If there's no thanks in our hearts, it's because the gift is, if there's no thanks in our mouth, it's because there's no gift in our heart. We don't have the word, uh, his promise in our heart. So there's not thanks. We can say we have, or we know, we know, but this is not where faith resides. Faith resides here. If faith resides here, if I have the promise, if I have the gift, if I hold it in my heart, what will be in my mouth is, thank you, Lord, for your leading me to victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my, my body. You might be fighting cancer. You might be fighting whatever it might be. But what's in your mouth, you'll find, is thanks be to God. Who is, and not only what's in your mouth, but in your picture, you'll have a picture of a W. So you went 0-3. But we're about to go 10-0. So don't tell me about having a bad... How many of you understand it's the games at the end of the season, not the first of the season, that really matter the most? So what's the ending look like? Does it have a big thank you? Thank you, Lord. Does it have a big but God? Look at here. It's so great that God gives us examples. Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 20. Romans 4, verse 20, this, is a, this, is, this whole passage, really, of Romans 4 is talking about Abraham, but I, I love this portion. Um, it says, now, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promises of God. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anybody know the story? So I, I kind of would call him like Owen 3. Anybody know about an Abraham that was an Owen 3? And God, God, it was Abram, and God had to come down and change his name. He had to kind of work with him a little bit and say, I need you to start saying something else. I need you to, I need you to start seeing something else. Take him to the stars. I need you to start saying something else. Abraham, I, I got the God part. The, that's, the, that's the H. It was the, like, yah, breath, like the very breath, uh, essence of life. This is where that, in a sense, that origin would come from. So they put God in, and this is like, it wasn't just Sarai, it now was Sarah. So God's with you, so you're carrying him. He said, carry me into tomorrow. Carry me into tomorrow, I'm going to change your name. Uh, carry me in tomorrow, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Here, come out to the stars, let me show you about tomorrow. And it says, wait a minute, he's a champion? God's calling Abraham a champion right here. No, 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 he's 0-3. He, this is, we're in this... We, we, we so many times identify with our past and our, and our failure, and we don't identify with what God said and what his story is. And so his story has changed my story, even if I have an 0-3 record. Yes. Yes. And because I have an 0-3 record, what happens is, is what I see is another 0-4, 0-5, 0 and this is the way it's always going to be. I'm always going to be rejected by guys. No one's ever going to like me. So I might as well just go find who likes me. And I know some other girls that are rejected too. So I don't know my identity. So I just see my picture of loss, 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 loss. That's hard, isn't it? It's hard. It's hard taking the field of faith, knowing that you're just going to get another L. You know what people do after three or four or five or six or seven, eight, oh and eight? You just, you want to transfer. You want to quit. Anybody ever been there? You want, what's the point of it all? Anybody ever wanted a faith quit? That's where you need a, a faith friend. We'll talk about some of that next week. You need a faith friend. That's part of one of going back to school. You need some faith friends. This is Pastor Evans talking about. It's important to have somebody there that can stand in agreement with you to tap you on the butt. Let's go, bud. Let's go. Grab you by the face mask. I mean, I remember coaching Little League. I'd grab these kids, and I, they're not mine. I'd grab them by the face mask. But they knew I liked them. And I'd say, come on, buddy. You know, I had, I had Callie uh, Wasson. Oh, man, she outplayed some of those boys. Oh. And you could grab, she's like, uh huh, I'm getting them. I said, you get them. Everything you got, uh huh. And she'd go out there and pancake some boys. God. Callie. God. 
We're going to have you come give a pep talk at halftime to our Alma boys. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. She had it. She just had, you know what she had? She had, uh, she had a team that believed in her. And believed in, believed in what was in her. You know who's in you? Same, the same, there's something in you that you and I, so many times, we don't even recognize. And that's, that, there's a God factor in us that we haven't taken into the equation. And we're not carrying him into tomorrow. And how do I know? Because thanks is not on my lips. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. No unbelief made him waver. He didn't go back and forth, it says, concerning the promises of God. But... But he grew strong in faith. His faith grew strong. How did it grow strong? As. As he gave glory to God. I remember this. I see him laughing here. I think he's remembering this story about we need to get our as in gear. We need as we give glory to God. We need to begin to, we need to, as I'm telling my story, I need to give God glory. As I'm telling my story, I need to give him glory. I need the but God moment. I need the thanks be to God moment. I need to say thank you, Lord. Th- thank you, Lord. As he gave glory to God, what happened? His faith grew strong. He, he thank you. I, I, he took, it's like when the, somebody gives you a word and, or a gift. It, when you thank you, it's like doing this. Saying thank you is like putting your grip on it. Like this is mine. Oh, is this for me? Yes, it is. Thank you. As I, it, it, my grip on the promises of God grows when, when I give him glory, when I begin to thank him for what, he's, what he said, what he's done for his promise. I put that thought in, or, or that promise, that word in your heart and begin to say thank you. And so again, uh, I, what I'm talking really about today is, is, is not just did you carry the one? Are you carrying the one? Right? That's the title of this morning's message. Are you carrying the one? I hope that when you do math and you think carry the one, I hope you think, do I carry God into this equation or am I trying to do my math, my math for my, my, my month and my bills without God's help? I hope we, hope we think that. But ultimately, what I wanted to do some review is this, because this is where we all get to. It's so easy to just keep on walking the walk and, and we, we don't really recognize we walk in a road in, in a place of defeat, just like these disciples on the road to, to Emmaus. They're defeated. Their countenance has fallen. They can't see Jesus is right there with them the whole time. They can't see because of what had gotten in their heart and yet the Lord is coming to them with his word. He's speaking and he's opening the book of Isaiah from the beginning, telling them all about himself and their hearts are beginning to burn but they don't even recognize their hearts are beginning to burn. When you're saying a story, you're telling a story about your defeat, about your defeat yesterday, and you're prophesying your tomorrow, and you're checked on the inside, and our hearts are burning within us, and you're checked. You're saying things. So many times we're talking, and the Holy Ghost is right there. He's saying, tell my story. Tell a Holy Ghost story. Don't haunt your tomorrow. Tell a Holy... But we don't pay attention to our heart. We don't say, we just keep on telling our story because it feels good. Because everything feels so bad, telling the story is kind of the one thing that kind of feels good for a moment. Anybody ever been there? I just need to tell my story. I got to just tell you my story. Listen, tell your story with God in it. That's called testimony. That's called moving on. That's called, a, that's called this right here, A+. Plus. That's called you passed the test because you paid attention to your heart. Pay attention to the heart. What's the present word of your heart? What's the present word of my heart? Is it one of defeat? What's the present word about maybe you've been to the doctor six times? You're going again. You've got a scheduled appointment scheduled for, and you're probably not going to figure it out tomorrow either. And then you're probably just going to have to make the eighth time. Or maybe don't even schedule it, because what's the point? Is that double L? Are we mirrored image here? All right. Should have done a lowercase L. All right, y'all. So what's the present word? I'm going to go back uh, 
to Mark chapter 4. What's the, what's the enemy after? The word. It's, we know this. We've heard this. The enemy comes in Mark 4, verse 14. The, the farmer sows the word. And some are like the seeds along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes it away. You know, and it's just like that's what Landon reiterated last week about how I told the story about this movie called Bloodsport where there's a coin in his hand. And he said, I'll take that coin. If I take that coin, I keep the girl. And he said, okay. And he took, he, what he did is he exchanged it. And sometimes there's, this is where we're at. What, pay attention to the heart. Here's the deal. You can lie to yourself, but your heart won't lie to you. You know. The Holy Ghost, you know. You get the check. You get the, mm, did our hearts not burn within us? You get that prompting when, you're, when your words are not in agreement and are not giving glory to God. When your story is not giving glory to God, that grieves him because you're one of his kids and he wants your tomorrow blessed. Anybody know what I'm talking about for their own kids? More than anything else, what do you want for your kids? You want their tomorrow filled with good, don't you? You, more than anything else, you want them just to be doing well. You, more than anything else, you want to see them filled with joy. More than anything else, you want to see them uh, ha- have a relationship with the Lord who, who they can trust. More than anything else, you want to see them blessed. How, why do you think God isn't the same way for you and me? Why do we think that sometimes? So he checks us. He says, no, 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 no. Yeah, add, add something to that. Do this. Put this on it. Ah, James 4 Man, if you just turn around, if you ever tell your kids this, if you just turn around, if you just, just don't, don't, your choices matter. Can I tell you back again? Your choices matter. You, you, we're not just teenagers that grew up and now we got it all together. Your choices still matter. And you know one of the biggest choices that we make every single day and we got to pay more attention and that is this, the choice of our words that are coming from our heart. And you know what? What needs to be added into our words is, and I give glory to God. I give him praise. And I, what will happen is, is faith will be strengthened. That which you barely had a grip on, you'll be able to grab and pull in and make it your own. You'll, you'll be able to stay there. Thanksgiving it holds it and it holds you into the place to where you, when you're not going to have to grow weary in doing good and you'll be there for the time of harvest. Thanks. You know what causes you to stop short? Grumbling and complaining. You know what causes a football team to have a bad season? Grumbling and complaining and blaming players, blaming coaches, blaming fans, blame, grumble. You know what? You have no one to blame but your own choice. Your tomorrow, God gave it to you. You have a free will. And he gave you an offering of a good gift and a promise of your tomorrow and my tomorrow. My tomorrow, he gave me a promise of my tomorrow, one of hope and a good future. So pay attention to your heart. Pay attention to your heart. What's going on? Luke chapter 24, 16. But their eyes were restrained. This is that story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. Again, we're looking, faith is not, faith is not what you see. We walk by faith, not by sight. Their eyes were, he, the Lord was trying to get his disciples, who he'd lived with for three years, to, to move from the way he will now operate. Not with them, but in them. This is how God still works with you and me. Thank God he's operating within us. And Ephesians chapter 1 says this, how the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you. In me is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. He wants to operate from within us. And if we'll learn to speak from within instead of everything from without, what will happen is thanksgiving and glory to God will be in our mouths. And what will happen is our tomorrows, our testimony, W, 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 because we're carrying him in. We're getting the right answer. It goes on in verse 32, and it says this, And they said to one another, after they had walked with him, Did our hearts not burn within us while he was talking with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Did our hearts not burn within us? I 
I think we're at this place, and this is ultimately what I came to talk about this morning. Felt like the Lord had asked me to ask you, what's, what's your story? And is it his story? What's your story that you've been talking with your, your spouse, your friends? What's your story about your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your finances? What's your story? I'm afraid. That's not God's story. That's not his story. That's not his story. Is his story in your story? Is his story in my story? Is his story in my finances? Is his story in my body? What did he, what, and this is where, I, I love it. In, in Hebrews chapter 12, um, out of the Message Bible, I didn't give you the scripture, but it says where if you uh, find yourself lagging in your faith, go over uh, the, the story again. Go over the story of Christ again. If you find yourself letting go, he said, go over his story again. Go over his story again. If you find yourself letting go, he who did not spare his own son, How will he not freely give you all things? We have to go over his story again. You know what so many times we're doing? We're praying prayers. But they're not prayers of faith. How do I, if I'm lagging in my faith, what do I need to do? Go over his story. Go over his story. Go over his story. And what I'll find is, it'll be just like someone's telling me, carry the one. Carry the one. Carry the one. Carry the one. He's, car- he's carried into my tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you. Thank you, Lord, that what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. You'll find what will happen is now a conviction will, will, will reside on the inside of you, and you'll speak from here. It's like, thank you, Lord. You paid for that. That by your stripes, I am healed. Lord, I come boldly to, Lord, you said this right here. This, this sickness is, is on my body and it has no right to be there because of what you did. You'll, you'll, you'll face your financial, your relationships, your, your everything. You'll, you'll, you'll parent different. You'll pastor different. I'm, these messages are not just for you. These messages aren't just for you. These messages are, 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 are for me. Thank God what's cooked, I also get to eat. Check your heart. What's your story? Is it, oh, thank you, God. How is praise in this house? How is praise in your house? How, much, how is the countenance of the face? Let me say it this way. How's your breathing? How's your breathing? Your sigh might just be a sign. Might just be a sign that says, check or pay attention to the burning of the heart. And if it's burning, Lord, what are you saying? He's drawing attention to your and my story. What we are talking about tomorrow is because he doesn't want us keeping taking a left turn and going around that same mountain and ending up with the wrong answer. He wants us to move past that. Check your story. Check your story to his story. Check your story. Check your work. That's what my teacher would used to tell me all the time. Um, uh, Check your work. You think... Well, faith's not working. Oh, yeah? Check your work. Where's the praise? Where's the thanks? If there's not praise and there's not thanks, it's just, it's just this simple. You didn't carry the one. You, you've had a word exchange just like that coin in that, that guy's hand. So just because we teach on faith for a week and another week and another week, it, it, we would be foolish to think that, oh, we got it. I remember um, Brother Hagen, he would teach on, um, went to Bible school, a, a school that, that he started, and uh, he'd teach, and people would say this, it felt like he didn't know anything else. 
It's like, like, do you know anything else? Pastor, do you know anything else? You told me that scripture last week and last week and last week. Do you know anything else? Well, I do, but apparently God is very patient with you. Apparently God is very patient with you to come with the message again to say, check the story, check the words, check what you've been coming out of your heart because we can't move on until we get this settled and we carry him into each equation. On every equation, this is what's so cool about this equation. I can, I can change this, uh, I can change this right here to this right here. And guess what? The same principles, let's just do, do it like this. The same principles Sorry. <laughs> the same principle, nine plus five. Help me out. What do I do? Carry the one. Nine plus one, 10, 11, 12, 13. What do I do? Carry the one. Nine, 10, 11, 12. What is that? What, no, what is that? the house in order things aren't working you didn't bring him over well my kid bring him into your kids bring him into your finances bring him into your health bring him in bring him in bring him in bring him into you 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 want to have a a, a a girl you want to have a guy you want to get you you have desires of your heart bring him in the lord bring him in the lord gives me the desires of his heart of and of my heart. Bring him in. Carry the one. Carry the one. I didn't make that up. I didn't even know that was going to happen. I just like, what the heck? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Everywhere I've been looking this year, I'm seeing one, two, three, four. Coming into order. Coming into order. All I was trying to do was get big numbers that would allow me to carry the one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord. We'll go with that too. Thank you, Lord. Things are coming into order. Hey, things are coming into order. The stand. Things are coming into order. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna just like Thomas said, I will not believe unless. You know what? That was just a choice. We can make a choice today to say, I've been saying a story without him in it, and said I'm gonna choose to give glory to God. Instead, I'm going to choose to give him praise. I'm going to say, hey, well, this thing's just not working out. It seems like you've been in a dead end. Now we're going to say this. Things are coming into order. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Things are coming into order. Your body, you might have been dealing with things in your gut. Things are coming into order. Yes. You just say, things are coming. In. Well, it's been a long time. L, L, L. Oops, there you go. Carry the one. Things are coming into order. Carry the one. Things are coming. We'll just keep carrying the one. Things are going to come into order. Things are coming into order. Things are coming. Into... Father, we give you praise. Uh, we. That was a we. That was W. We. Win. We. We. Father, we give you praise. Don't let me alone up here. We. We give you praise. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise this morning. Things are coming into order. Our finances are coming into order. Our health is coming into order. Our mind is coming into order. Our relationship, our marriage, Father, thank you, coming into order. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise this morning. Things are coming into order. We carry you into every store. We carry you into our tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where we haven't, we just repent now. We, we repent. We, we thank you, Father, for just, uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over those words that have been spoken. Just uh, remission. In the name of Jesus, remission, removed. Removed, pulled up in the name of Jesus. We thank you for a tomorrow that's bright, a future that's bright, bodies that are whole, future. Thank you, Lord. Victory. 
We thank you that is the story of this house. That's the story of my heart is one of victory. The story of my tomorrow is one of victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the good news of the gospel. Thank you for the good news of the gospel. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. It was upon you to preach good news to the poor, rich, to the broken, restored, to the sick, healed, to the bound, delivered, to the blind, eyes opened. We say things are coming into heaven's order. Thank you, Lord, in my house, because of your story, because of your story that changes and changed my story. I give you all the glory today. I give you all the glory. I give you all the glory. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. So we give you praise for your faithfulness. Catch us. Check us. When we, when our words, when our story is not in agreement with you, we'll pay attention. Somebody say, say that. I'll pay attention to my heart. Thank you, Lord, and we'll carry the one. We'll carry the one. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We're carrying the one. Isn't that good? Did you carry the one? Hey, somebody needs to ask their friend. Did you carry the one? I, I'm carrying the one. This is back to faith school. Just a simple equation. Did you carry the one? It'll work out. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer for anything, we'd love to agree with you. Otherwise, we will see you Wednesday night coming up. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.